Hi everybody, hope you're doing marvelously well. I'm here. You know what, this is, uh, this is a little overwhelming. We had uh, like lunchy breakfast before this. Right. I wanted to sort of like save all my thousands of questions. But Norm, when I was a kid, not in the late 70s and early 80s, I used to get the imported guitar player. Right. And I would go to the back and there was all your ads and all these mythical guitars, which are now surrounding us. These mythical guitars that I was so, so I'm, I'm a little nervous meeting you. I'm, oh, stop, please. <laughs> no, it's no. because, and I was trying to like not talk about it when we were having breakfast, because first of all, I thought you'd be about 105. I am. <laughs> yeah. I mean, how old were you when you started? And was it originally Norman's Rare Guitars right from the get-go? Well, from the beginning it was, and I didn't really want to name the store Norman's Guitar. I didn't want to use my name. My wife talked me into it because prior to opening the store, I had a clientele of a lot of people that just knew me as Norm or Norman. And um, she said, you know, if you call it Guitar World or whatever you might want to call it, people aren't going to know it's your store and you've got a certain amount of customers, so why don't you use your name? And I was very reluctant, but I listened to her and it turned out to be a good thing because I was able to keep a lot of my customers and they referred a lot of people my way. Now for a man who's in his middle, no, <laughs> middle in your late 60s, how yeah. old were you when you started your first store then? Uh, 25 when I opened the store, but I was wow. buying and selling guitars since I was about 17 out of an apartment in Miami. I just, uh, I was playing with two guitar players that both doubled on guitar and bass. Neither of them had a bass. And <laughs> I said, you know what, I'll find an ad in the newspaper, I'll buy a bass. And uh, what I'll do is you guys can double up on it. In the meantime, I'll learn to play a little bass, you know. And it turned out I got an old jazz bass out of an ad in the paper from one of my idols. Um, we, in Miami, there was a band called Frank Williams and the Rocketeers featuring Little Beaver, who's one of my favorite blues guitar players and singers. And um, so I was buying the bass from this guy and he writes the receipt and says, Frank Williams, I went, you're not Frank Williams from Frank Williams and the Rocketeers featuring Little Beaver. And he goes, yeah. And he looked at me. I was like, you know, 17-year-old white kid. He was going, how would he even know who I am, <laughs> you know? But it was kind of a, a luck out all the way through. So, um, and it was just something that I'll never forget, you know, because I'm amazing. still a huge fan of Little Beaver. We were talking a lot about blues artists that influenced you. And do you feel like growing up in America, especially growing up in Miami, the kind uh -huh. of access that you had to those artists? Were you going to shows all the time? Were you taking notes of what guitars? Mm -hmm. I mean, how do you, how do you in those days, because we're so used to Google, we're so used to finding out everything within two seconds now, researching this kind of thing must have taken some real effort. In those days. Well, you know, that's the thing is that now you can look anything up in a heartbeat and you can find anything that you want to know. Back in the day, uh, I kind of was stumbling through the radio stations in Miami, and I kind of ran to this station, WMBM, which was the R&B station uh, where I grew up, and I just fell in love with this stuff. Amazing. And so I used to have to go to record stores, but the regular record stores didn't have the stuff I wanted. So I used to have to go to an area called Liberty City, which was the black section, and that's where they had all the tunes that I was listening to that all my friends didn't even know what I was talking about. Um, you so know, were you looking at what, album covers, seeing them playing the guitars and identifying them? There back then. Oh, it was an, this was even before. Oh, wow. it was a lot, I mean, there were albums, but it was mostly the 45s and the singles. And I would see, you know, people like Johnny Guitar Watson and mm -hmm. Little Beaver and Bobby Womack and, you know, a lot of the stuff, Earl King, that, you know, I would tell my friends and they'd go, Earl who? You know, it was like, <laughs> you know. And if you know the tune, uh, Let the Good Times Roll by Jimi Hendrix, that was really an Earl King tune. It was called Come On. It's recorded a lot slower speed with a big horn section. It's really cool. So, um, and we were talking at lunch about how the British took our music that we weren't really appreciating particularly and um, reworked it and then brought it back here and sold it to the Americans because I think it was more palatable. They were seeing young, good-looking guys with long hair, you know, that they could relate to playing these tunes, but they didn't even realize that those tunes were old R&B tunes. Sure. It was Mike Bloomfield who we were also talking about right. has that famous quote that the, uh, the British took American music and sold it back to the Americans. That's yeah. right. They did, and they did a good job because uh, we're still buying it. Yep, absolutely. 
Now, this is uh, obviously a guitar paradise. Guitar parasite. <laughs> uh, guitar paradise, sorry. Yeah. That might be when you have to come to do your taxes. Oh, uh, there you go. Um, so, as a fan of guitars, what's your guitar? What's the one that you love? Uh, Hammond B3 organ. <laughs> I mean, that's what I was my real instrument. Oh, it was. But I just love guitars, and I've always I loved see. guitars since the very beginning, because the one thing that you couldn't do on a B3 is, and that you can do on a guitar, is bend a note, sure. put a vibrato on it like a vocal. And it's so much more expressive. I, I mean, hope I you're a Deep Purple three. fan. Though, so. I did like Deep Purple very much. You <laughs> know. Of course, Booker T. And all Booker the other T places. is like one of my idols. You know, so And he played so simple, and we were also talking about that, mm -hmm. is that I'm a person who loves the understated, not sure. the overstated. So I like the simplicity and wanting more notes, not less notes. Right, absolutely, leave them wanting more. Well, the collection's absolutely insane. I, I, I've just been walking around mesmerized. I actually picked up a Barney Kessel, which I'm gonna jam with uh, Mr. Tim Pierce in a minute. Right. And he brought his 335 that he had just bought from you recently exactly. as well, which is also absolutely beautiful. Well, this is not actually the collection. This is the store. Now, there's probably sure. about 150 more guitars in the back wow. that are not showing, and there's about 600 guitars in a warehouse. And um, we have a lot of stuff that's just not here that I show by appointment. And uh, I did two books. My first book is more about the collection of stuff and what mm -hmm. I had at the time. And the newer book is more about stories about the guitar itself. Wonderful. Well, we're gonna put some links to those books and I'm, I'm gonna have to get some. <laughs> that's Terrific. absolutely amazing. Well, thank you ever so much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, I appreciate it, Warren. I'm honored that you uh, even wanted to talk about it. So. Look, I, I can't understate I can't believe that this is the first time I've been here, and it's thank you to Tim to be like to set this up for us. Tim is family. Tim is one of the greatest guitar players of all time. Absolutely. And he's also one of the great guys of all time. So he is. He's an absolute sweetheart. He's family here. All right, so we're going to do a little jamming. <laughs> Gibson, two tones. <laughs> it's now an A sharp. <laughs> that was fun. It was very fun. So when did you, uh, when did you first discover this guitar store? Uh, a long time ago, when it was at the other location up on Tampa, very small, always kind of intimidating because they had the best guitars and, and they're somewhat expensive, some of them. <laughs> but this place is great because I have found some really great bargains here. I found a Moserite that was mm -hmm. a bargain. A couple of months ago, I found a Guild M80 that had been modified. It oh, wow. was really inexpensive that I bought. Luckily, I, I waited about a week and nobody else bought it, but I have it at home, it's really nice. I love Guild guitars. Yeah. It's, this is like a Les Paul, a double co cutaway Les Paul, but it's a gill. Oh, beautiful. It's really cool. I've seen your Mosrite. Right yeah. Is that is it red? It's a burst. Yeah, this a burst. is the Mosrite. Oh, burst. okay. Yeah, yeah. Right. What am, what am I thinking of that red guitar? What was that one that's like really crazy shaped? We, we... That's it. You're just, you're just changing the color in your mind. Yeah. It does have red on it. But yeah. It's, I'm yeah. getting old, you see there. No, no, no. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's this too is. Many uh, you must just want to find an excuse to come and hang out here all the time. Luckily, it's close to where I live, but uh, I've, it's turned into a, a club for me. That couch and the people who come, every day I meet new people every, and great guitar players. I mean, that's the scary thing is I show up here and everybody is so good. Yeah. yeah including <laughs> you.
<laughs> I know it's the, the world has changed. You used to walk into music stores and it was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a great video. Yeah, thank you. That was a great video yeah. because even, I say even, I shouldn't say that. I didn't think twice about it. And then I was like, oh, wait there. It's fingers. But it's also the like, room sound. <laughs> it's the room sound that identifies it mostly. Yeah. It's this like short room sound that's on the guitar that's really amazing. Well, I just picked up this Barney Castle. What's remarkable about this is like, this is the, I walk around for a few minutes. I'm, I'm maybe here five minutes and this just like spoke to me like, oh, this is the most beautiful guitar. And I picked it up and it's like, you know, it's slinky. I mean, you can just whiz around on it and you can bend. Yeah, I don't know why it hasn't sold. I flirted with that guitar for a month, and I don't know why I didn't quite buy it. Well, you said the same thing. You walked around, it was the one that caught your eye. Yeah, yeah, that's the one I picked up. I mean, there's I everything about these yeah. guitars, the, yeah. the fact that you can get right up here, and, yeah, you're right. and you can just relax with it. <laughs> it's also not too bright, and when you get it in the right light, you can see all the cracking on the face. Oh, yeah, it's gorgeous. Finish. It's really beautiful. We don't get any commission off a sale, but if it, it's probably will have sold by the time this, uh, this video is up. When, when you're saying that guitars don't last very long here, do no, they? No, they don't. You see a guitar and it's gone very quickly. So you better make up your mind quickly. Yeah. yeah. So we jam a little bit more? Okay. <laughs> actually a shredder. <laughs> you were able to show that. Just for a, for a second. second. I tried to figure out what, what, whether, what, what key are we in? What's going on? Yeah. Was that sweet, sweet picking? Oh, I have no idea. No, you should do. It was no, I don't know. It's like... Yeah, I still try to... Sweet picking. But yeah. I just learned it from the Aldi Miola thing when he did that. And didn't Barney Kessel do that? He'd always no, no, do that. Blah, blah, blah. That was before my time. <laughs> But this is gorgeous. This is such a beautiful guitar. Beautiful. Cool. Well, I had a blast. Thank you very much. Thanks for bringing me here. Yeah, this is welcome. fantastic. Come back. Please, as ever, leave a whole bunch of comments and questions and all that kind of stuff below. I've got two people to throw under the bus to answer questions. <laughs> See how that works? Have a marvelous time recording and playing guitar. <laughs>